Good morning. Today is Wednesday, February the 27th, 2019. Today we will begin round nine of the Georgia Book Award book battles. We're almost there, guys. In round eight, we read The Giant Squid versus A Beetle is Shy. And the votes are in, and this book's won by a landslide. The Giant Squid. Today, two books will square off. And I have to say that um, these two books surprised me. So, it really is true. You can never judge a book by its cover. I really was very surprised reading these yesterday. In fact, one of them made me giggle a lot as I read. So, today we're going to be reading The Shark Lady by Jess Keating. And our second book today is Ada Twist Scientist. And this book is written by Andrea Beatty. Uh, Andrea Beatty. So let's begin with Shark Lady. And it says it's the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Kind of see the trend, right? Talking about two scientists. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the shark. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with her sharks? to breathe underwater with gills of her own. More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City, stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out. Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled at the pebbled sand. She imagined a sil silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes, but the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them, so she dove. this time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15-gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as the ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans, and they said sharks were mindless monsters.
Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark, so again, Eugenie dove. She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they were put together both inside and out. And despite all the people who didn't believe in Eugenie, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered yet. The Red Sea Sand Diver, the Barred Exena Pipefish, and the Volcano Triple Fin. On a research mission exploring the Palau Islands, Eugenie was di diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, instead she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Majeure's, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when, the swarm, when they swarm through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive, and soon they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more, but she never forgot. Many still believed that sharks were mindless killers because of the scary reputation humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove them wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than they know? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. The end. And that is the story of the shark lady. Our next book is called Ada Twist, Scientist. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day, chasing each sound and sight, and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly young Ada with lots in her mind would have something to say when it ought to be said.
That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, stop, as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and simply asked, why? Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose and why are there hairs up inside your nose? She started with why and then what, how and when and by bedtime she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her day's parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid whose questions in chaos both grew as she did. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wrecked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Ada was busy the first day of spring testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose. A pungent aroma that curled up her toes. So we said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of this terrible th stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She started at start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from Dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. Zowie! The stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two. Hypothesis two. It's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne, so young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, Stop! She's going to put the cat in the dryer. Oh, no. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now, by the time we count to three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why? Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What? Ada queried. Her father said go. You've ruined our supper. You've made that cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And C.
so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and Stew and that cat, and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of this terrible stinking? Hayda Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question and then she asked two and each of these led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got, think got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why and then what, how and when. And the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Pay attention to what Ada's doing. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid? who wanted to know what the world was about. They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. Look at the wall. Ada had lots of thoughts on her mind. And that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and a heart that is true. They remade their world. Now. They're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for the smell, what could Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that's the question. And someday, who knows? The end. And that is Ada Twist, Scientist. So I hope you enjoyed both of these books today. I can't wait to see how the votes turn out. I am sure they're going to be close. I know that I enjoyed both of these books and I want to tell you to never stop questioning and to always dig deep, just like both of our scientists today. Have a good day and be on your best behavior.